Welcome everybody back to another episode of the Power of Story podcast. This is your host, Taj Deshaun, Vice President of Self Publishing 30 Days. I'm joined today by a very special guest, a man who I've looked up to and admired for over 10 years at this point. We played college football together. He's always been like a big brother uh, figure to me, not only on the football field, but off the football field and since our playing days with some of the things he's doing out in the community. I'm gonna let him get into his story in just a little bit, but just to give him a brief introduction, Mr. Jonas Rousseau is the founder of Elevated Expectations, which is a group of exceptional individuals creating opportunities for youth in underserved communities, teaching the fundamentals of skills in a variety of sports and arts programs, and developing unique skills and interests that help to build a child's confidence and overall leadership skills. Jonas, welcome to the show. Hey, Taj, man, that was a, um, that was a dope introduction. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, for real, thank you for having me. Hey, man, it's a pleasure to have you here. I got to give a dope introduction for dope people, man. So you had that one coming, man, you know. <laughs> but, man, uh, like I said, you're doing so many great things in the community. I know I briefly went over it. I barely even scratched the surface. But before we dive into some of your origin story and how you even started doing this type of work with your organization, can you just mm -hmm. talk about, from a high-level view, what is the goal and the mission of Elevated Expectations? Um, very simple, right? Elevated Expectations is, uh, is an organization where we provide uh, opportunities for those who don't have it, right? We provide resources for those who don't have it. And it's that simple, right? So we live in a world where, you know, of equality, we live in a world of um, everyone is supposed to have the same access to resources and, 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 and opportunity as everyone else, right? And not even, let's not even say a world, we live in, that's what this country is supposed to be founded upon. And, um, and, 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 you know, coming from Brownsville, Brooklyn, uh, that's my goal is to make sure that the kids from neighborhoods that, that, um, that, that I grew up in and, and the ones that, that are similar to those, that they have the same access to the same resources and opportunities as, you know, the kids in more affluent neighborhoods. Mm. And obviously you grew up in the community that you're serving. I know this is just the beginning. You're going to be serving people all around the world. Um, right. but you know, just, just you grew up in this community and you touched on that word access, right? Mm -hmm. So growing up, was there a point where you realized that you had limited access to certain opportunities? Um, and well, I got a two part question. When did you realize that? And then when did you make the shift to say, I'm going to provide that to other kids coming up in my community so they don't have to struggle the way I did? Uh, well, that's really a good question. Uh, access to limited opportunities. You don't really know that you're poor, you don't know that you, you know, that you, you don't have uh, until you leave your uh, community, right? Because uh, one of the biggest things like your environment really dictates uh, a lot about your, what, you know, what your upbringing is going to be. And uh, that's why I love football so much because football provided me with that opportunity, right? So um, I was 12 years old when it really hit me. Uh, be why? Because I got an opportunity to leave my neighborhood, right? And I, and I went all the way from Brooklyn, I traveled all the way to Queens, right? And for a lot of people, they'd be like, hold on, you just wanna borrow over. Yeah, but that was a big deal for me, right? Like they had big houses over here, over there, they had a, a huge, nice field, so on and so forth. In my community, we didn't have a football team, right? So like there were no Pop Warner or anything of that nature. So when people were like, oh, hold on, where did you play Pop? I didn't play Pop Warner football, right? There was none of that, was, there was none of that there. Um, so when I left, uh, when I left and I went out there and I, and I played football, that's when it um, really hit me. Pause. Let me take a second, uh, a step back, because of what actually made me go out there was my mother started a baseball league in Brownsville, right? Um, actually, where I'm helping to coach youth football right now, but we'll get in that in a second. Um, and she she created a, a, a football league. Uh, I mean, excuse me, a baseball league out there at the time. Uh, she took our neighborhood, I mean, our, our projects that we grew up with, right, grew up in. Um, uh, there was a, half the projects was uh, numbered with 400 buildings. So, so there was the four side and there was the three side, right? So there was, you had the four side against three side, did a whole league and built it up. Um, from there, we went a little further out to Star Starlight City and we played some other teams, so on and so forth. And that's what gave me the initial exposure and then um, from there, transitioning into football, which even made me say, like, you know what, I can go out there, right? Because the, the biggest thing is fear, right? So when you see somebody coming through and they got football equipment, like, yo, where you at? Queens? Oh, no, no, we don't do Queens. 
right? So, you know, like, <laughs> like people from Brooklyn, yeah, we don't do Queens, we don't do this. It ain't here, it ain't, it ain't happening. And, um, and, I'm, and I'm thankful that. Uh, thank you uh, to them. Thank you to my mother. I'm thankful uh, to the, the people in the community that helped me because, uh, like, I didn't have a ride to to um, to Queens. Right? Somebody from the projects they drove me out there. You know, um, uh, somebody else from the projects they helped to pay my fees so that I can do it. Right? So, um, for me, it's always been this sense of uh, of, of like we're of being indebted, right? Like I, I'm, I'm indebted to where I'm at now in my life to always, just because somebody else did it for me, right? So I always have to, um, always have to reciprocate that. Wow, that's powerful, Jonas. And the biggest thing that I'm hearing is, is uh, I mean, because we hear a lot of people talk about wanting to give back, right? You know, a lot of people say, I want to give back to the community. And it sounds great, but what you've actually built, which we're going to take a deeper dive into in a second, I think is a, a beautiful representation of everything you just talked about, like with your mother growing up, seeing her provide that team, you know, something to keep kids from getting into trouble, but to have a place where they could play baseball, which not only gave you access and an outlet, but like you said, exposure to different parts, different neighborhoods. So you could you could get to see different things. Um, can you talk about some of the ways that through your programs with elevated expectations, what are some of the ways that you're creating exposure and giving access to the kids that, that you're working with? So uh, another really good question. Uh, so one of the things that happens in our communities a lot, right? So the thing that I did do back in the day, I played basketball, right? So if you're from Brooklyn in the 80s, 90s, whatever, like you know how to play ball, right? Even if you don't, if you like, in order to be to socialize, you know how to play basketball. Um, but one of the biggest things uh, that I found was that we were kind of like throwing our kids to the wayside, right? Like, so if you're six five and you can't dunk, Oh, you big for nothing, right? So a lot of kids will hear that. Nah, son, you big for nothing. I, I, and it's like, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, right? He might be six five, one seventy five, but if you put him in a pool, he's the next Michael Phelps, right? Maybe that's what his frame was built for, not for dunking a basketball, right? But the the problem is we get caught up in this community of like this is all that you can do, right? So, um. For me, I was blessed, you know, like, uh, you know, I was blessed with the opportunity to be able to say, okay, you know, like football was my thing, right? I was an aggressive kid, I go to earn. But for so many other people, it doesn't work out. So even, you know, there's this sense of, ah, you know, you feel a certain way because you made it and everybody else did it, right? And you know to yourself that it's only because of that opportunity, right? Or it's because, it worked in your favor, right? Like you were a really good basketball shooter. So because you was a good shooter in basketball, you made it out. But that doesn't mean everybody else can, right? So now we need to identify what the other children in the community are good at and provide them with opportunities with things that they're good at so that they too can ascend out of the, um, out the community. So that was my main focus um, with it. So I said, you know what, we need to do wild stuff like stuff that you never thought about but once again it's my access to things not necessarily in my community so now we went to stony brook university right right next to stony brook university is a um a high school that looks like a mini college called ward melville ward melville high school um we had a quarterback he's like a third or fourth string quarterback who went there for whatever reason um, I went over to that school for whatever reason, and um, and I saw on the, they had like these pull down tabs of things to do, right? So you can pull a tab and you can do archery, you can do fencing, you can do um, whatever the case may be, like you can do that thing. Um, and I thought to myself, wow, what if the six five kid, instead of playing basketball, he don't really like basketball had a community where he could go into and pull out a tab and say, oh, I want to I want to try fencing. Or, oh, I want to try swimming, right? And that is a community of swimmers who's going to build him up, right? So when I looked around, I said, we don't have that. I said, so let me create that, right? So the first thing I did was I reached out to a, um, a fencing coach, not fencing, excuse me, an archery coach, right? And everybody's like, well, why archery? Why archery? To me, that's just like the furthest thing out like that's the furthest le thing left field. So I said, I want to, you know, you know, I'm an extremist, right? So if we're gonna do it, we're gonna, we're gonna do it all the way. So I reached out to him, and once he, and once he, and once he said yes, 
I was like, oh yeah, now nah, we gotta run this. We gotta run this, you know. And then that's really how it went, you know. Like he's he's a black um a uh, uh, black uh, uh man who coached at uh, Columbia University uh for for four or five years. He coached you know some of the uh, top uh, people. He got a he got a um a young man going to the Olympics uh, uh this year, right? And his thing was also about that about building up. Uh, the community, right? And, you know, he also realized, like, okay, I'm out here at Columbia helping these people. I need to do for my people. And when we sat down and we talked, you know, having that level of mentorship has helped keep the fire burning and helped me uh, keep it moving. So, you know, so we went from um, archery to fencing to lacrosse to golf to um, uh, we did equestrian, we did rock climbing. It's like, you know, whatever we can, like, can think of and, like, Come on, let's do it. Let's run it. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, let's get this done and um and 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 and, and, and taste it, right? Like you understand? Like at, at this age, like taste it, right? Like why does a five year old need to you know play uh, football from the time he's five until the time he's 25, and then when he gets kicked out the league, now he's sitting back in 26 saying, "Dang, what, what you know? What's wrong with my life? What was wrong is when you was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you should have been tasting other things." Right, so now you would have the opportunity to say, okay, I did this at 25. I did it at a high level. I blew out my knee. Now I also like to buy horses. Maybe I should go farm. Whatever the case may be. Right, but the more things you go out there and you taste, the most things you go out there and try, it, it will it will allow you for greater insight and in, 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 uh, greater opportunities as you move forward. Mm, see, I knew that question was gonna get you fired up. Are you hearing the passion, right. folks? Everybody yeah. tuning in. Are you hearing the passion, man? Like. You, you got these kids doing so many different things just by you having this idea and thinking outside the box and giving them access to these things. I might look up and see on your website, one day you might mess around and have these kids on the moon, man, in some astronaut suits, just doing something yeah. different, you know? That's I mean, I, my next question, I was actually going to ask you all the different, I'm trying to keep track of, track of, I want you to like just recap these so everybody can hear. You said archery, mm -hmm. fencing, swimming, equestrian, which is horseback riding, for those of you who don't mm -hmm. know, for those of you who are cultured, you know what I'm saying? Uh, rock climbing, right? Yeah. What else? Did I leave yeah. anything out? Um, we, no, uh, lacrosse. Um, lacrosse. And lacrosse is something that I found out when I went when I went out to Long Island, right? So when I went out to Long Island, that was the thing I, I realized. They said, "Yo, you know, if you black and you like are like good with like your left hand in, in lacrosse, like there's like a lot of scholarships for you." I was like, "What? That sounds crazy!" Like, nah, for real. Like this one, I was like, "Wow, that's wow." Um, what else? What um, soccer? Um, what else? Uh, uh, we do. Um, oh, the biggest we do dance, right? So like, not everything is not everything is, is sports related. So it's really broken down into like into three pillars, right? So it's usually non-traditional sports. It's um, the arts, and then it's education, right? So like everything is, is broken down into to the three different pillars. So like most of the stuff we spoke about just now is underneath our um, non-traditional sports program. Right. Then you have our arts program where we have dance, we have um, drama, we have theater, um, and we also have uh, art. You know, so we have painting, ceramics, um, you know, uh, everything. Like, like our, our art teacher is dope, right? She created the Black Lives Matter um, mural in Foley Square, right? So, like, you know, like, you know, like we have, we, we're, we're putting the people around our, our children in need. Right, and we're giving them access to these people so that they too can like say, "Oh wow, I see somebody who, who's doing that now. I can do it." Um, so you know that's part of the arts, um, and you know our dance program is is amazing. We have look. I, the one thing I really want to put out there is that what really is going to separate us from other people is going to be our our um, our educators, our teachers, our coaches, our instructors. They are like like by far um, some of the most passionate people about what they do. You know, and um, so that's that's really big for us. And then we have education, right? So we have um, uh, we do we do math and ELA, um, uh, whether it's homework help, uh, tutoring. Uh, we deal with SAT prep. We deal with Regents prep. Uh, we deal with our specialized school, uh, specialized standards test, right? So out here in New York City, uh, in order to get into some of the more affluent schools, like there there are tests that you need to take, right? So 
who didn't know about any of those tests, right? Me. So when, when people were going to Brooklyn Tech or Bronx School of Science, it's like, how do you even get into those schools? I had no idea. Well, there are tests that have to be taken, right? And people prep, prep for those tests and they study for those tests, so on and so forth. The problem is we found out about it when the tests are about to happen, right? So the, the tests about to take place, you know, next week, but all right, cool, run it, I'll do it, right? Now you mess around and you're like 20 points off of a passing grade and now other people are telling you that you're dumb. Right? When it's like, hold on, how long have you been preparing for that exam? Oh, I've been preparing for that since I was, you know, in the uh, fourth grade, fifth grade. You know what I'm saying? Well, I just did it last week, and I'm only 20 points off from you. Imagine if I just started last year studying for it. I'd probably take your spot, right? Which is why a lot of, you know, information isn't really uh, given out there, right? So, you know, things, you know, ELA, so on and so forth. And one of our biggest things that we, that we just started this year, um, which is our financial literacy. Right, so we have a whole stocks class, right? That's 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 taught by a teacher. We have a actual financial literacy class that's taught by another teacher, where she deals with um, with savings, where she deals with investments, where she did, you know, and and all of this happens from you know uh, uh, from kids from anywhere from 17 all the way up to college. I mean, excuse me, anywhere from seven years old all the way up to um, college age, right? So uh, we really start this off young, right? Uh, one of the things that we, we've identified is that uh, there are so many resources for children once they get locked up, right? So once they get locked up, right, like the, 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 uh, the DOJ, they're there to say, look, I'm going to help with this, i help with that. Well, what about beforehand? How about we set up some of these preventative measures so they never get locked up, they never get a record, right? They know, you know, they know how to invest, they know, you know, where to take their money and what to do with it, so on and so forth, right? So if you provide them the platform, the opportunities to get things done, uh, they will. So yeah, we have, you know, quite a few things that we have going on uh, at any given moment. That's awesome, man. That's beautiful. And the thing I really love about it is that whether it's the educational side, like you said, with the financial literacy or any other any other, other components that fall under that educational umbrella or the sports or the activity side, like you said, no matter what's going on, the most, like the great part about it, one of, one of the many great things about it is that you've assembled a team around it. So it's not just you up there teaching the class about financial literacy. It's not you out there on horseback or rock climbing or shooting. Like I know you do get your hands dirty and get in there with the kids, but you have professionals you have instructors so like you said people can actually get not just exposure but educated about it and that's key and what was really inspiring to me man and i know people are gonna go check it out we're gonna give you a chance to talk about the website and all the social media um here at the end when we close out but one of the most beautiful things that you see when you go on to the website elevatedexpectations.org when you go check it out it's such a beautiful thing to see you know black and brown kids doing different stuff man and i know that other kids, when they see this, they're getting that exposure too. And so not only just for the kids, but for the parents and everybody being able to see that, you're, you're, you're just changing the trajectory of generations to come, man. And I, and I love it. Um, one of the things that, because a lot of entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs listen to the Power of Story show, right? And uh, Elevate Expectations is a nonprofit, right? In, in order for you to have built this, you had to be an entrepreneur. Whether your business is for profit or whether it's a nonprofit, you have to be an entrepreneur to build, to put a system in place, to build a team and to actually execute. So can you just talk a little bit about for people who are aspiring entrepreneurs, can you talk about, uh oh, we got the, is that the elevated expectations hoodie? Yeah, 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 <laughs> there we yeah, go, so we got the merch. So yeah, yes, so I said, let me, let me throw this on. Real quick, uh, first and foremost, want to shout out to our uh, royalty status uh, for for the great work that they. Oh, hold on, let me get this right. Right for the great work that they do uh, here. Um, they've been working with us since day one, so a lot of the uh, uh, designs and apparel that you that you will see from us it will be from my royalty status. So you know, this is a part of the new line that we have coming out, um, which is our. Uh, uh, elevate expectations and all be from you know from royalty status. So I just want to you know definitely get them a plug, right? Because they do they do great work uh, out here. So I appreciate that. Um, yeah, that's clean, man. For those of you yeah. watching the video, if you're just listening to the podcast, you got to check out the video so you can see this fire hoodie. It's not out yet. I was just going to ask you, man, where can I get right. it? It's not no, out. It's, it's not out yet. We're going to have it. It'll be up on the website very soon, right? So uh, by next week, we'll definitely have. Um, uh, this this hoodie and, um, and and others in different colors, so on and so forth. That this would be up on the um, on the website uh, very soon. 
Okay, I love it, man. I love it, man. Definitely so keep at, an eye out for that. Elevatedexpectations.org. Sorry for cutting. Yes, sir. Oh no, no, you are good, man. The one thing I was gonna ask you is, can you give some advice or even just talk about your journey or do a little bit of both advice about your journey to actually building this? What what this process has been like? Um, like I said, like we talked about earlier, a lot of people want to give back, man. A lot of people have great ideas, but are they willing to put the put the years of grinding in to actually build something that's gonna have the type of impact that they envision? So what advice would you give to an aspiring entrepreneur, whether they're going the for-profit or non-profit route and wanting to make an impact? Um, my thing, it, it would be to know why you're doing what it is you're doing, whatever it is, right? If I'm selling Coke bottles, why am I selling these Coke bottles, right? Um, if money is my, my main objective, right, then understanding that, you know, certain things may not be for me, um, if impact is my main objective, understanding that other things may not be for me, right? So just understanding that. And for me, it's something that I've always understood because having an impact means more to me than any dollar amount, okay? And that's just a me thing, right? So I understand struggle, right? I understand process, right? Because, you know, coming from where I've come from, uh, the struggle and the process was super real. Um, but I also understood what it, where it took me to, right? So when we won that championship at Stony and we sitting up there and we have the rings and, we, and it's like, it's like, wow, I really came from here to here. Wow. Right. And, you know, so uh, for me, any aspiring entrepreneur has to understand their reason for doing what it is they're doing and to make sure that they surround themselves with people who are like-minded, right, in terms of their, their, um, their, their core principles, right? Like, you don't need a yes man or a yes woman around you, right? So for me is, are you a part, are you looking to um, provide opportunities and build the youth in underserved communities? Yes, then we can rock out. Because you may have a different, a completely different way that you want to go about doing it, right? And now I have to sit down, I have to listen to you, all right? All right, cool. Hmm, I may not have done it that way, but let's see if that, you know, you understand it's going to, it's going to work, right? Because there's no one size fits all in any, um, in any business format, right? So uh, it's definitely understanding what you, you know, what is your reason for doing whatever it is that you're doing and ensuring that you continue to stay on that path and you don't stray. Right in a nonprofit world, you get you know there are grants and things of that nature, right? So now there's a grant out there for I don't know, uh, like right now they do a lot of stuff dealing with like you know elderly people and stuff like that, right? So now you start to shift your mission towards those grants because they're getting you the money to keep your um, your organization running. Well, now you have to do what they tell you to do, right? You have to spend that money the way in which they tell you to do it. I've never been one to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit up, hey, yo, Taj, what's going on, bro? You got this, this jump off that's going on um, right now. And, you know, whatever you can support, you can support. And right, right then and there, you said, all right, James, I got you. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. And now you go down the line. You have those people, they go down the line. You go through the struggle, you go through the process, you put it together the way in which you see fit, right? Because a lot of people, for me, they say, well, you don't need an archery instructor. You don't need, you can just do it yourself. I can do it myself. The impact will be different. And I'm about the impact, right? If, if, it, like, if I know what I'm about, you can't sway me from that. You understand? You can't change me. You can't, right? So if you're about a dollar amount, then you're, gonna, you're probably going to maneuver to the dollar. Right? And I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, you just understand who you are before you get into, into anything. And understand that it's going to be a process, right? It, 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 it's not going to ever be an easy, um, an easy fix or one, two, three thing. It's going to be a process. It's going to be a, um, it's going to be a journey, uh, and there's going to be a lot of ups and downs. And you just have to be prepared to deal with the the downs, knowing that neither one of them are going to last forever. The ups aren't going to last forever, nor the downs. And being and just being prepared and, and, and keeping an even keel with both. Wow. That was fire advice, man. Like, I really love that you touched on not allowing the money, whether this is nonprofit or for profit, not allowing the money to sway you from your vision and getting caught up with right. being money hungry and letting it throw you off base with why you started on this venture in the first place. 
I think that was one of the most, you know, I'm over here taking a bunch of notes, but that was one of the key takeaways for me, man. I thought that was huge. Um, I have one final question for you before we wrap mm -hmm. up, but before I even get to that question, man, please just tell people where they can look, where they can find out more about Elevated Expectations, where they can get in contact with you. Just please, if you don't mind, just tell us all your social media handles and all that type of good stuff, man. I appreciate it, man. Um, everything is pretty simple, right? Everything is um, at Elevated Expectations, right? So um, if you're looking us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, what else is there? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, but, well, for those three, it's, uh, at, it's uh, at Elevated Expectations. Um, uh, to get in contact, uh, is, uh, uh, you can send us information at info at elevatedexpectations.org. Our website is www.elevatedexpectations.org. If you want to get at me directly, it's Jonas at uh, elevatedexpectations.org. So, you know, we try to keep it um, pretty sim simple, even though the, the, the name of it is uh, pretty lengthy. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. And my final question for you is, man, what, what do you really want your legacy to be? Like, when you leave this earth, what are people going to say about Jonas Rousseau? Ooh, um, that he cared, that he loved, that he was a, that he was a person of, um, of, of, of principle, and that, um, he, he left this place better than, than he found it. Wow. And, uh, for, for me, the biggest thing is in my life, and that's why I appreciate you, brother, uh, in, in the intro. Um, when I leave out of here is to inspire, right? Like, it doesn't matter what you've done, what you've accumulated financially, this thing, I want to uh, inspire the, the next generation to build off of what, uh, what we're laying down uh, now. Uh, just like, you know, I was uh, able to um, inspire you, you know, to help you uh, build to where we're sitting, where we're at right now, right? Like, I want people to understand, like, he was, he was an inspiration. Uh, he helped me to uh, elevate my expectations. Mm. We got to drop the mic on that one, man. I was, getting, <laughs> I was getting chills while you were talking, man. That was real. That was real. And thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. As you already know, you know, you, you definitely are an inspiration to me and the countless lives that you touch. Um, everything you said you want to be remembered for, the great part about it, man, is you've already accomplished it. You're just still continuing to grow it and expand it so you can do it on a bigger scale. So much respect for you. Uh, you know, please get in touch with this man. Please check out Elevator Expectations. Um, Jonas, thank you again for coming on The Power of Story, man. Obviously, we have a lot. You will be, you will be hearing from this man a lot more. Uh, we're we're going to do some future projects we're working on together, so stay tuned for that. But uh, thanks again for coming on, brother, and have a good day, man. Appreciate yeah, you. I appreciate, I appreciate you, brother. All right, man.